Every year, hundreds of people are reported missing in national parks and forests. Most are eventually found, but there's a smaller category of cases that are never solved. Here are five of those cases. Number five, David Gonzalez, 2004. In July of 2004, at around eight in the morning, David asked his mother for the keys to his family's truck. He was only nine years old. He and his family were camping in Northern California, San Bernardino National Forest. He was going to grab some cookies that were left in the truck. It was parked only 50 yards away from their campsite in a shared parking lot. His mother watched as he made the small trek to the truck. When he got to the parking lot, she turned her back for less than a minute, and when she turned around again, Gonzalez was gone. His family ran to look for him, but he was nowhere to be found. His mother reported that she didn't hear anything strange, no screaming, no cry for help, nothing out of the ordinary for the few seconds her back was turned. Gonzalez never made it to the family's truck. The cookies were locked away where the family had left them. His disappearance triggered a massive search and rescue effort. In the following days, an army of searchers scoured the woods for Gonzalez. The nine-day search for the boy involved as many as 200 people and ended without a trace. His mother later reported that she saw a beige truck leaving the campground soon after her son went missing. However, the authorities never pursued that lead because there weren't any signs of abduction at the scene. There were no signs of struggle, no tracks leading off into the woods, nothing. He had simply vanished without a trace. It wasn't until 10 months later when a group of hikers stumbled upon the boy's remains only a mile from the campsite where the family was camping. The recovered remains comprised of about 25% of the boy's skeleton. The authorities declared that he died from a mountain lion attack, but this theory was quickly abandoned when a forensic examination showed that there was no evidence that a mountain lion or any type of animal attacked or killed the boy. The only marks on his remains were left by scavenging animals after he died. Every person in the campground or nearby that day was interviewed. The abduction theory was abandoned again soon after. None of the interviews pointed to abduction, and the finding of the bones on the ground surface didn't fit the pattern of a body dump. It's unlikely that an animal or a human could have attacked, dragged, and killed the boy without leaving any signs of struggle, any blood, or without making a single sound. How he died remains a mystery to this day. Number 4. The Cowden Family Massacre, 1974 On Labor Day weekend in 1974, Richard and Belinda Cowden took their two children on a camping trip in the Siskiyou Mountains in Applegate, Oregon. They were reported as missing when they failed to show up for dinner at Richard Cowden's mother's house on September 1st. Their last known whereabouts were as follows. At 9 a.m. on September 1st, Cowden and his son left their camp and went to buy milk. Cowden returned with David to camp, and the family went swimming in an adjacent creek later that morning. That was the last anyone ever saw of the Cowden family. Everything that happened after that is a mystery. A massive search for miles around the campsite turned up nothing. Accounts from the time described their campsite as undisturbed, as if the family left abruptly. Their bodies were discovered seven and a half months later in April 1975, about a hundred feet from the campsite. Richard's body was found tied to a tree on a steep hillside, while the bodies of his wife and two small children were found in a cave with rocks sealing the entrance. Searchers were as near as 100 feet from the small cave where the bodies of the family had been crammed. Richard's wallet and his wife's purse were discovered, but nothing was missing from them. All we know is that they were brutally murdered, but the killer was never caught. Dwayne Lee Little, a rapist and killer serving two life sentences, allegedly confessed to a fellow inmate that he murdered the Cowdens while on parole, but there was no conviction, and the case remains open to this day. Number 3. Bessie and Glenn Hyde, 1928 In 1928, Bessie and Glenn Hyde were newlyweds on their honeymoon at the Grand Canyon in northern Arizona. It was October, and their goal was attempt to run the rapids in the Colorado River. If they were successful, Bessie would have been the first woman ever to accomplish it. This wasn't Glenn's first time on the water. He had done a lot of tough rivers in his life, but Bessie was new. Multiple witnesses saw the couple weeks before they disappeared. They all said that Bessie wanted to turn back, but Glenn wouldn't stop. This was more than just a fun trip. It had the potential of a paid lecture tour if they had completed it. 
They were last seen on Sunday, November 18, 1928, heading downriver just below Hermit Rapid. Glenn's father conducted a series of searches on the morning of December 6, 1928. It wasn't until December 19 when a plane finally spotted their boat adrift on the water. It was seemingly undisturbed. The boat was upright and fully intact, with the supplies still strapped in. There were no bodies on the boat. The couple was gone. To this day, no trace of the hides has ever been found. There have been a lot of theories as to what has happened, but nothing has ever been determined. Number 2. Jared Negrete, 1991 in 1991, 12-year-old Jared Negrete left with his Boy Scout troop to go on his first overnight camping trip. They were camping in the San Bernardino National Forest. Jared was described as a shy and slightly chubby kid. The day of his disappearance, he was with his troop and five other scouts. They were hiking up the highest peak in Southern California, Mount San Gorgonio. It was a long and difficult hike. Jared grew tired and fell behind the rest of the group only a thousand feet from the summit. Differing reports have him either wandering off the trail, falling behind after stopping to tie his shoe, or being told to hang back for the troop to collect them on their way back down from the mountain. Whatever the case, he was never seen again. This triggered a large search, but it only led to the discovery of Jared's backpack, some candy wrappers, beef jerky, and a camera. Twelve photographs were developed, mostly landscapes, but the last one was of Jared's eyes and nose, taken after he went missing. The camera was discovered in the same area as the other items. But after a 16-day search that included five helicopters, rangers on horseback, and infrared cameras, Jared Negrete was never found. Number 1. Paula Weldon, 1946 In the Green Mountain National Forest, there is a small area that believers in the paranormal call the Bennington Triangle. It got its name due to the amount of mysterious disappearances which occurred in that area between 1945 and 1950. Joseph A. Citro was a paranormal author who coined the term because of the supposedly supernatural circumstances surrounding the vanishings. In December of 1946, Paula Weldon became the second person to go missing in the Bennington Triangle. 18-year-old Weldon was a college student and told her roommate she was taking a long walk before she set out on the trail and never returned. She was dressed for walking, and not a long hike, wearing only jeans, a coat, and sneakers. Her attire implied that she planned to return before dark, when temperatures were supposed to dip below freezing. Multiple people saw her as she hitchhiked her way to the trailhead, and on the trail during the hike. When Weldon didn't come back by dark, her roommate let the school know, and the search began. The school even suspended classes so that students could help with the search. Unfortunately, nothing came from the search. Was she abducted? Did she commit suicide? Did she get lost and die of exposure due to her inappropriate attire? No one has ever discovered her body, so her disappearance remains a mystery. There's rumor that this area is home to a creature called the Bennington Monster. Could this Sasquatch-like animal have something to do with the disappearance? Regardless of whether people think these disappearances are natural or supernatural in nature, people go missing in national parks year after year. You can believe that these were accidents, abductions, or something even more sinister. But regardless, there are lessons in these stories about how to stay safer when you're out in the woods.